Hi booktube, welcome back. My name is Jessica and the topic of today's video is a review of the short second life of Brie Tanner by Stephanie Meyer. The Short Second Life of Brie Tanner was written by Stephanie Meyer. It was published by Little Brown and Company in 2010. So it came out after the original four books in the series were published and right around the time that the Twilight films were being filmed. So pretty convenient release date there. It is 178 pages and considered a young adult fantasy. I bought this book from The Book Nook, which is a store at my local public library. Anytime they withdraw books, they'll put those books in The Book Nook and sell them at deeply discounted prices. And The Book Nook also takes donations from the public of used books to sell. All of the proceeds then go back to the library for library programming. So this was one of their withdrawn books. It still even has the library dusk jacket and spine barcodes etc attached to it. I decided to read this book because Midnight Sun came out this year and when I originally read the Twilight novels over a decade ago I didn't read the companion novels that came out and so I thought it would be interesting to not only revisit something I haven't read in over a decade, but to also read the companion books that came out with the Twilight, following the original four Twilight books as I reread the original. So I haven't reread all of the original four. I've reread Twilight once, so I will have read it three times now, but I thought it just would be interesting now that I am more mature and to go back and see if the books still had sort of the same um, experience for me that they originally did. I remember originally thinking that they were pretty bad, like pretty bad, but I still ate them up. Like they were like, I guess you would call it a guilty pleasure. Stephanie Meyer is an American author she graduated from Brigham Young University with a degree in English. She lives in Arizona with her three sons. And that's really the most that I could find on Stephanie. Um, out of respect for authors, I don't like to go digging for gossip and tabloids or anything like that. I usually just stick with sharing what they have in their author bios. And that was the most that I could find in any of her bios. Let me read you the blurb on the back or in the cover. Which one is it? In the cover. All right. <clears throat> Brie Tanner can barely remember life before she had uncannily powerful senses, superhuman reflexes, and unstoppable physical strength. Life before she had a restless, a relentless thirst for blood. Life before she became a vampire. All Brie knows is that living with her fellow newborns has few certainties and even fewer rules. Watch your back, don't draw attention to yourself, and above all, make it home by sunrise or die. What she doesn't know, her time as an immortal is quickly running out. Then Brie finds an unexpected friend in Diego, a newborn just as curious as Brie about their mysterious creator whom they know only as her. As they come to realize that the newborns are pawns in a game larger than anything they could have imagined, Brie and Diego must choose sides and decide whom to trust. But when everything you know about vampires is based on a lie, how do you find out the truth? That's the blurb. That blurb makes this book sound far more exciting than it actually is. Brie is one of the new vampires. If you have read the books or watched the movies, she's the young girl at the very end. And this is not a, a spoiler because if you read the books in order and you've already read book three, you already know her end final destination is that she dies at the end of book three. Um, she's one that they capture and they decide they're going to try to save her and let her live because she surrenders and, and then the evil Tori end up killing her anyway. And that's who Brie is. So this 
um, basically follows her life after she becomes a new vampire. So, this is the first time that we get to see the Twilight story told from the perspective of a vampire aside from when Bella becomes a vampire in the last book, but the main four books are all told from Bella's first person point of view. So this is the first time we really see anything else from any other character's point of view. And it was such an opportunity. And I, I just was so disappointed in this story. We really don't get to know Brie as a character because once she becomes a vampire she forgets her previous life she knows like little bits here and there that she was homeless and that her situation wasn't great she was in foster care system i think but that's all you know that's all you learn about her life um this book is mainly driven by Bree's inner dialogue. It's not necessarily driven by the plot. It's not necessarily driven by relationships developing between characters or anything like that. It is driven by Bree's inner monologue. And her inner monologue is so boring because it's she's this new vampire and in Stephanie Meyer's vampire world, a new vampire can only think about blood. So really you're just reading 178 pages of this newborn vampire um, constantly riding this roller coaster between being super thirsty and then feeding and then after feeding being able to think about things a little bit like what's going on with this leader and why are we all being creative and and then being super thirsty and having to hunt again and then after they hunt again being able to think. But even that is like throughout the book Brie makes it really clear like it's impossible for her to think rationally or clearly about anything other than drinking human blood. And so even in those moments when we're catch capturing like a conversation between her and Diego, or we're seeing them observe something that the leaders are doing that make them question things, it's still through this lens of um, still not thinking clearly about it, everything's still kind of hazy because all I want to do is drink blood. And it just... <laughs> It's, it's so boring. Like, Diego is an interesting character, but again, because we're seeing things through Bree's eyes, Bree doesn't trust him, and like most of their relationship development is just spent with Bree deciding whether or not she wants to trust Diego, and then like as soon as she trusts him, then Diego's gone, and he's no longer part of the story, and then by the end of the book when you start seeing the overlap with Eclipse then it's like why bother reading it because Brie is supposed to be a character that becomes sympathetic with the Colons. So rather than telling the story of that end of the Eclipse with the battle, rather than telling it from the perspective of a vampire who wants to kill them all and is like hungry for vengeance and blood and whatever, which would be a completely different perspective from what we were presented in Eclipse, it's the same perspective because Brie doesn't want to kill anybody. She's the nice vampire. She's the one that agrees with the Colons. So even in those scenes where it's like repeating what happens in Eclipse, it's just repeating what happens in Eclipse without any new perspectives because Brie's perspective is the same as the Colons' perspective that, yeah, this is evil and yeah, I don't want to participate in this and yeah, we should save Bella. Like, it's so, it's such a waste. It's such a waste. Um, so I really did not enjoy this book. I skimmed through parts of it even because like I said, it was just that inner dialogue of, ooh, I wanna drink blood, I'm so thirsty. And that got old and repetitive. And thank goodness it was only 178 pages because I probably would have DNF'd it if it was any longer than that. And honestly, this makes me a little nervous about diving into the rest of the companion novels because if they are like anything like this book was, I think I'm going to be really, really disappointed. So overall, I did give this two stars out of five. It probably is closer to a one star read for me. Um, and I probably will never read it again. 
In terms of content warning, content warning for this book would be just around violence and gore in general. I feel like Stephanie Meyer's books are pretty gory overall and that's the biggest content warning um, that you really run into with them. And I do want to have a discussion though in the comments down below. So my discussion question is, have you ever read a book that was inner monologue driven that worked well? Because for me, books that are inner monologue driven tend to really fall short because there's just not enough there unless the character has this um, deep, powerful transformation of some sort that makes that inner monologue, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Compelling? <laughs> <laughs> and interesting you know otherwise if it's just inner monologue driven to me it just ends up feeling more like a character sketch than an actual full-fledged novel so I would be really curious to know if you've read any books where um, having that main device being inner monologue if that has ever worked for a book for you um, or if it just doesn't work at all because in my experience, it hasn't worked at all. But if there is a book that it has worked on, I kind of want to read it. <laughs> so let me know down below if you've ever read one that works really well, um, being focused primarily on inner dialogue. And until next time, make sure to read good books, drink good coffee, and take care of yourselves and each other. Bye!